everybody, it's Phil Ralston from Sunday's 9.30 service. I'm in the Piazza in Milan, and I'm looking at the Duomo Church. We're going to go tour it and go all the way up to the top. Pretty incredible. Hope you enjoy service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant, from our living room to yours. We're so honored you've chosen to worship with us in this way. So let's turn up the volume and let's get started. Everybody needs a little something more than simply living day to day. Wake up in the morning, go to bed at night. There's got to be a better way. I'm here to tell you now about a life I've learned Is more than it has ever seen Open up your heart and let the Lord inside It'll be more than you ever dream Walking every day now with the Lord at your side Is the only way for you and me He'll give you such a joy and always be your guide and then you'll know you've been set free. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life, beginning and the middle and end. Without Him there won't ever ever be enough, I'm telling you the truth my friend. up a whole new way. Follow in His footsteps and you'll understand, and then you'll join me as I say. Walking every day now with the Lord at your side is the only way for you and me. He'll give you such a joy and always be your guide, and then you'll know you've been set free. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Beginning and the middle and end Without Him there won't ever ever be enough I'm telling you the truth my friend Without Him there won't ever ever be enough I'm telling you the truth my friend I'm telling you the truth my friend I'm telling you the truth my friend In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear, Dear Father, Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your Spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day, enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen? Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So we had Camp Formation, which is the Bible camp for the Grand Canyon Synod, for the middle school age with then high school youth and college as the counselors and then pastors and other adult leaders who are the program leaders. It was an awesome time. We were at a camp Pine Rock near Prescott, Arizona. Everyone had such a fantastic time. It was very inspiring. And we hope that with the movie that you're about to see that we will also be inspiring even more churches and more youth to participate next year. She went, I didn't. So you can talk to her about her experience. Mm -hmm. but let's, let's take a look at what Bible Camp, Camp Formation was all about. Camp Formation Summer Bible Camp for middle school youth in the Grand Canyon Synod is held in Camp Pine Rock in the cool pines of Prescott, Arizona in July, 2022. This is a beautiful location for an excellent camp facility. High school and college age youth serve as counselors. Pastors and adult leaders serve as program staff. Nurse Anthony serves to manage all our medical needs during the week. We arrive in the afternoon after checking in and settling into our rooms. We gather at the dining hall. We share a prayer before we go in to eat. Before we head out, Pastor Craig Corbin shares some announcements. In the evening, we have our first home church time, which was every evening after dinner. We get to know each other and share about our day. Special guest pastor Jackie Pagel from our Senate office staff joins us while she is at camp. After some singing, Pastor Sarah Stadler starts us on our theme, Keeping the Earth with this day's emphasis on keeping earth from Genesis chapter 1. 
Each day we share in activities and Bible study all together. We also meet in small groups. The first evening program is led by Marissa Matavellis with lots of laughter as we play games and get to know more people. We go to our first campfire with songs, a reflection, and prayers, and then to our cabins to go to sleep, at least some of us. On our second day, we gather bright and early for morning worship. We sing some fun songs to wake up and get moving. Each morning, someone shares a reflection, and we pray together to start the day. After breakfast, we have special activities, dividing up into our day groups on Monday and Tuesday for group building. The high ropes challenge everyone. This is a time of learning confidence in yourself and also working as a team. On Wednesday and Thursday morning, we test ourselves with rock wall climbing. Archery. And field games. Then it is everyone's favorite, zip line. <laughs> it's fun to see the sense of accomplishment and growing confidence in everyone. After lunch and quiet time, campers choose a trek or special activity 
guided by our adult leaders. These include craft projects, outdoor games, and even hiking led by our own Bishop Deborah Hutterer. Mid-afternoon, we have a break to get a snack at the camp store. At every opportunity, a crowd gathers to play gaga ball, which is like dodgeball, down low, in a gaga ball pit. Music is a major part of camp formation. Every evening after home church time, we gather in the large group and the music team gets everyone moving and singing. In our evening program, Marissa teaches us more games to get to know each other and just have fun. We also have two special evening programs. On Wednesday, the Gap Campers, who've just completed ninth grade, plan the program and teach some new games. They also plan and lead a special prayer experience. We hear from Gap Camper Sebastian about his camp experience. On Wednesday night, we had this prayer service. And at this prayer service, uh, first we started off with games, and then we had this one long continuous prayer. And that, it was really touching, actually. So all of the Gap group, we went up there and wrote our prayer on these note cards. And then we all read it aloud, going in this long prayer. And it was for basically anything you could think of. And we had these prayer stations, like uh, we had this wooden cross where we would lay our burdens down. It was nice. It was actually quite peaceful. The camp overall, it was very uplifting. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and I'll definitely be going back again. On Thursday, we have a Share Your Gifts extravaganza. We applaud the bold youth and leaders who share amazing and fun abilities. Our campfire is a time for singing in quieter voices and reflection on the blessings of the day. How is God moving within us, among us, and in the world? We place ourselves in God's loving hands at the close of the day. On our last morning, some of our families join in the closing worship service. We hear scripture, join in singing, and receive Holy Communion. Soon it is time to say our goodbyes and head home. Camp Formation Summer Bible Camp is a unique time for young people to learn about and grow in Christian faith. We pray that you have been blessed in watching Camp Formation 2022. We look forward to even more young people joining us in 2023.
We read from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour. Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. So this is um, part of the whole Abraham saga, of course, and God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son, even though when the promise came, they were both uh, well on in years and had not had any children yet at that time. And when this comes about, even more time has gone by. Uh, it's figured that Abraham was about 99 years old by this point, which uh, does make me smile a little bit because it mentions that he's hanging out at the oak kind of in the shade, it says, in the heat of the day. But as soon as he sees these travelers, uh, these potential visitors, he jumps right up. And I want to see this 99-year-old man jumping up and running around, uh, gathering everything to, to give proper hospitality to his guests. He does uh, create quite a large meal for them, actually. The amount of work he puts into this mm -hmm. hospitality because, you know, he didn't have a microwave oven or a modern kitchen. And all of these things yeah. took great effort and yeah. time to prepare. Mm -hmm. And it also means you had to have all of this fantastic all ingredients. Those, right, ready to go. So, kind of, so yeah. the expense and the effort mm -hmm. that they go to is amazing. But I don't think he was doing it because he thought, oh, I'm going to be given some special blessing. I think he just did this because... This is what he knew God wants, and this is the way he would treat others. But then, as it turns out, it does become an occasion for uh, a special blessing, uh, another affirmation that God would truly keep the promise God made, and not just the keeping the promise, but now within a year. Now they know that it isn't waiting without some kind of unknown time. This is going to happen within the year and that God is going to keep the promise. We read from Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Our next reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 28. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. 
He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became your servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Wow. Yeah. The, I tell you, Paul, um, he gets on a roll sometimes. He's a, What I try to remind myself, though, on, on places where it uh, starts to feel a bit heady, like, like uh, lots of theology that he's presenting to us. But at the heart of it, Paul is a pastor. He's, he's not doing this just to uh, create some big book for people to read who are going off to seminary and so they can study and become all knowledgeable, but it's really to actually encourage people, the people that were the Christian community in Colossae. And having been in camp recently, I think what uh, really kind of stood out to me is that part about all things have been created through him and for him. Uh, that reminder, we, we of course look to Jesus as our savior, but to be reminded that Jesus was also uh, part of the very creation of everything and that there's nothing left out, there's nothing excluded. And to know that opportunity to spend some time outdoors and the beauty of God's creation and to be reminded of that blessing and that goodness but at the same time, also to know that the clearest way we can know God is through Jesus and that Jesus is the true image, the true representation, the true God who became body and blood in our midst so that we would never, ever, ever be separated from God. We read from the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing, 
Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. It's a pretty well-known story, I think, from, from the Gospel of Luke. And uh, people kind of have a strong sense of identification it's often uh, with it. Um, are you a doer? Are you the person who likes to be active? You want to see things happen? Or there's the person who's a little more quiet and likes to be still and likes to listen. Uh, but I think there's, there's definitely more going on here than just a kind of a personality differences. I think, again, I can't help but keep thinking back to being up at camp. And that's kind of that somewhat perfect world, at least a bit of heaven on earth for the time being. And there it is, uh, seems just to be a whole lot easier to focus on God, uh, think about Jesus, listen to the Holy Spirit, the movement of the wind and the trees. And then there's life that we live each and every day, which has, as uh, was pointed out, many distractions. Reminds me of uh, kind of a joke we would have with our son, Mark, for a while. It was, look, a distraction. Or if someone was being particularly distracted, you'd say, squirrel, and uh, kind of a reminder how often we get distracted. Like a dog seeing a squirrel right. and dropping everything and chasing Chase the that squirrel. squirrel. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see that there's also this, um, there's an element of control in here that Martha was, was uh, busy doing a lot of work and she wanted to control Mary mm -hmm. and say, Lord, you tell her <laughs> to do what I want her to do. And, you know, okay, so you were at Bible camp for a week. I was at home mm -hmm. taking care of all the work for church and taking care of all the home duties and taking care of our son, Paul, which is quite a, a lot. Quite a lot. But I didn't want you to come home and mm -hmm. miss out on, on being there. Uh, it, I knew that this is the way it's going to be. I know I'm going to be mm -hmm. busy. I'll be distracted by many things. But I know that all of this needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So instead of calling you up and saying, you need to get home <laughs> right now. and No, it was, I hope you're having a good time. Mm -hmm. I hope you're doing lots of video. And she did because you saw that I earlier did. in the worship service. So, you know, you can be very busy and productive and it is good or you can be very busy and distracted mm -hmm. by the wrong things and that's not good mm -hmm. she was distracted that her that mary was not doing what martha thought she should be doing mm -hmm. and that's where it, it turns into the bad thing especially when it's Lord, I want you, you tell to make someone else do what I want them to do. Yeah. And, you know, we need to recognize that sin in ourselves when we want others to be the way we think they should be. Mm -hmm. And Martha could have just celebrated in what she mm -hmm. was doing. Just as Abraham and Sarah worked so hard to be good hosts for their guests, mm -hmm. Martha could have just been that good host for the guest, mm -hmm. Jesus, by working hard and doing her thing and not worry about yeah. Mary. And maybe even celebrating that Mary was able to just sit with Jesus mm -hmm. and, and speak with him and, and commune in that way. And so we need to check ourselves mm -hmm. that we have that attitude in our hearts that we also can celebrate other people's experiences in faith and our own experience. Let's not just be distracted by our work, but let's be blessed by our work. We pray together, confident in God's compassionate rule and enduring love. Let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. Dwell in the hearts of your people and mold us in your likeness. With Christ as our head, live and move in us that we may be your hands reaching out to the world. Lord, we give you praise for you always hear us. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the wonders of your miraculous creation. Inspire in us an awe and appreciation for each tiny insect and every towering oak. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Reconcile all warring tribes and nations and tear down the walls that divide us. 
Let the peace of Christ bring harmony and accord. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Hold us together when we are shattered. Bring healing when there is no cure. And heed our pleas for those in pain or trouble. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Dine with us in the sweet communion of a shared meal and send your spirit to joyfully dance among us. Grant us also times of rest and reflection, sitting at the feet of Jesus to listen. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Join with us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the power, power and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Stay in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And you'll see us both here again next week. <laughs>